Hello, everybody. Um, so I guess we're going to be the newcomers to this group. Um, so my name is Daniel Erb. I'm from uh, the Space Systems Lab in the University of Kentucky, and here to represent um, Kentucky Space, which is a uh, nonprofit organization, and then um, partnering with NanoRex in order to do affordable research on the space station. So next slide, please. So again, Kentucky Space is a non-profit organization that's uh, supported by a consortium of universities uh, located throughout the state of Kentucky. Um, most all the major land-grant institutions in Kentucky are represented. Um, and it, the, the group itself consists of uh, university faculty, staff, as well as students um, who are also mentored um, from industry. And the idea of Kentucky Space was in order to get a high technology firm um, located in Kentucky with the sole purpose of supporting and, and allowing aerospace research to happen in Kentucky, which historically is not a high technology area. Um, so uh, the University of Kentucky Space Systems Lab um, has a, a successful track record for other small aerospace payloads um, from high altitude balloons to suborbital sounding rockets, um, orbital satellites uh, called CubeSats, I don't know if you're familiar with it, um, and then finally our latest endeavor is um, operations on the International Space Station. And on the space station we're partnered with a company called Nanorax, if we get the next slide please. And uh, Nanorax is uh, an experienced team of, of integrators and mission planners who um, in, nine of, uh, in September of 2009, last year, using the National Lab um, initiative, was able to sign a, a Space Act agreement. And then really in a, in a Pathfinder type role of the new ship and shoot protocol, we were able to rapidly get something um, delivered to Kennedy and onboard and operational. So again, the um, Space Act agreement with Net between Nanorax and the National Lab, um, NASA, was signed September 2009. We were able to deliver hardware to Kennedy uh, December of 2009. Uh, it launched on STS-131 in April, and then we just operated uh, last month, and operations went successfully. Um, so if we can get the next slide, please. So what are Cube Labs? Um, they are um, designed to be low cost, uh, one kilogram platforms for microgravity research. Um, the design of it is, uh, allows for repeatable access by making a, a standardized form factor as well as making it small and um, inexpensive. Uh, part of the nice thing about it being small and designed to be small is that there is the possibility of down mass. Um, once the shuttle leaves, it's a little harder, as, as we all know, but um, it's still there. It's based on the CubeSat standard, um, which is a orbital satellite standard, which is 10 by 10 by 10 centimeters, um, which is, has a lot of uh, experience in the university world. Um, so we were hoping to leverage this with university researchers who perhaps couldn't afford some of the bigger guys but uh, would be comfortable with this form factor and um, would be able to then get their research on the space station in a microgravity environment. Um, so like I said, the, the standard is a 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter, excuse me. Um, but the way our, our, our rack works is up to four by two of those um, is actually available, so you can, you can get a fairly good sized piece of equipment up there. Um, and then the individual Cube Lab modules interfaces to uh, what's called the NanoRack or the Cube Lab frame. If you go to the next slide. And what the frame is, it's a, um, or the platform, it's an insert that slides into uh, an express rack locker, and then it provides uh, conditioned power and data connectivity for. Um, the individual cube lab modules. Uh, one rack can interface up to 16 one U's, but again, the, um, the units can be um, combined together in up to a four by two. And in order to really facilitate the ship and shoot um, concept, in order for software not to have to be validated, we're, we're leveraging the USB mass storage standard. So we put a little bit more requirements on the people developing the payloads. Of course, we're gonna help with that, um, but it works by using the USB interface, and um, you can see in the front panel there, it's a, it's a row of USB Type-B connectors which attach to the Express Rack laptop computer, and um, the experiments themselves are required to come up as USB jump drives, basically, and then you can pull the files off, pull your data off, and then um, get it down. And so it really uh, gets rid of a lot of the um, certifications you need to do on the software side because nothing really is permanently interfacing data-wise to the space station. I'm going next slide. So how can we help you? Um, like I said, in, in our lab, uh, we have experience with doing 
small things. We've built CubeSats, we've built things in this small form factor, so we, we are comfortable with embedded systems, embedded computing, embedded signal processing. Uh, we're comfortable working with and designing miniaturized sensors. Also, through our work that we did in CubeSats and with our university partnerships, um, we have contacts with people in the CubeSat world that have successfully flown miniaturized sensors, that have successfully flown um, uh, biological systems, biological sensors as CubeSats, but it's a, it's a perfect transition um, to go into the space station if all you're really looking for is a microgravity environment as opposed to the full free flyer space environment. We also, uh, with, especially with the help of Nanorax and their experience, we um, provide flight certification, as the, as the other companies said before, um, as well as um, making sure everything gets manifested. And then at the operations center at University of Kentucky, um, we can help with procedure generation, um, crew training, as well as uh, real-time operational support. Next slide. Um, so why should you go with Cube Lab? It's it's not it's not going to be a perfect fit for everybody, but it does have um, a niche. It's it's the right price point for people that's trying to do fairly you know basic research that might have too much risk in order to go into a, a million dollar project or so. Um, the 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 form factor itself is standardized but flexible, and again with the price point, it allows you to actually fly multiple times and be able to do lots of different. Um, lots of different samples. Um, we currently have manifest capability in all the ISS transport systems as well as all the future ISS transport systems. Um, again, like I said before, we were um, part of the National Lab's new ship and shoot protocol pathfinder, which we have achieved rapid access um, to the space station. Um, and we are currently on board. Uh, it's a picture of uh, Shannon Walker installing the nanorack frame. Um, so we're cool on board, we've successfully operated, and we currently have customers that are manifested that we're working through the system right now. Um, so, next slide. So this is lunch uh, time, so I'm going to get off the stage, but there's the contact information there. We have a table set up if you want to come by and uh, ask any questions. And um, thank you very much. <laughs>